Our next speaker is Tom Gunnarsson, who's lead of uh, regulatory affairs at Cora Aero. Um, uh, before coming to Cora, Tom was with the FAA Advanced Technology Branch, interfacing with industry and other civil aviation authorities on the development of consensus-based safety standards for small aircraft. While there, he coordinated an FAA regulatory feasibility study on electric propulsion. Prior to FAA, Tom was president of the Light Aircraft Manufacturers Association and chair of the FAA Aviation Rulemaking Advisory Committee that developed the Light Sport and Sport Pilot Rule. He's currently leading efforts to create global standards on electric propulsion for general aviation aircraft. He's also a pilot and flight instructor with experience operating several flight schools. Please welcome Tom. So um, my talk is going to cover um, something a little bit broader than just the product that I represent, which is in the picture there. Um, I'm going to talk about unmanned air mobility. We often hear the term urban air mobility, um, which is actually just a sub uh, section of this. So if I, let's see, there we go. If we look at the spectrum of what we, most we of us call unmanned, it's everything from the little stuff that we call drones all the way up to really big high performance aircraft that fly super high. And there's everything in between. They do different sorts of uh, missions. So we have everything from package delivery and logistics to aerial imagery, sensing, surveillance, emergency services. Uh, we're starting to see come up more and more now. Uh, passenger carrying is what we're looking forward to in the future. And so how are these operated? I have unmanned here in quotes because I'm not sure that's really the best term uh, because we can have uh, potential aircraft with people in it, so it's quote manned, but it might be controlled either from the ground or um, maybe just the aircraft alone does that. So. Um, just to kind of baseline this, I've got three categories here you can see uh, for control and communication. The first one is, is human controlling it directly, so a uh, remotely piloted uh, system where it's either line of sight or potentially beyond a visual line of sight, but still there's direct flight path, path control with visual sensing and verbal communication, just like we have today for uh, manned aircraft. And then the next evolution from that is self-flying, where it's semi-autonomous. Uh, there's a human who's monitoring. And uh, so you might have a pre-programmed flight path with human intervention for deviations. And then self-flying that's autonomous, where you might have a, a group of people in a, a control room somewhere that are monitoring the operation but the aircraft itself is doing the decision making. And so the human element would only come in if there was some anomaly that the aircraft couldn't manage. So if we look at uh, trying to bucket a lot of the challenges that we have today, um, I've broken it into to three groups here. One is the aircraft approval side for which uh, new technology is, uh, as we've heard, something that needs to be discussed and uh, decided to how that's dealt with. Uh, up through where we start mixing and matching categories of aircraft, you think about your conventional airplane and helicopter, well when you kind of mush them together, what is that? Uh, that still seems to be a little bit of a question. Um, nobody's talked about the powered lift category yet. Where does that fit in? Infrastructure is obviously a, a big thing because we're talking about operations that the environment can be quite different than your traditional airport that we're used to. Uh, and then when you add in there potentially autonomous flying, um, electric power where you need to have charging, uh, a little bit like we've seen with the, advan the advancements in electric cars. Uh, now if you own a Tesla, you go to a Tesla supercharger. Uh, well, where are those and how many are there and can you really get all the way across the country? Um, we'll have to deal with that as well. And then on the airspace integration side, um, how do you take your, your traditional model that we have today, which is human-centric, pilot and controller talking to each other, uh, 
seeing and avoiding and add the, the digital equivalent and how do they mesh. Uh, that's still a little bit of an uh, open question. So when we talk about the unmanned uh, community from the little drones all the way up to the high performance, there are some things that are in common. Uh, this whole issue of human versus digital when it comes to sensing and communication decision making. Air traffic management system, uh, how is that going to work? Um, how do we deal with uh, things like spectrum, uh, frequencies, uh, and then the, the whole issue about collision detect and uh, avoid, landing facilities, infrastructure, noise and, and nuisance perception. Uh, Greg just was talking about that. And then it's a global marketplace for those who are uh, involved either with the aircraft or the operations. It sure would be nice not to have to do something different every place you go. For self-flying, it's really about the, the human versus digital when it comes to sensing, communication, decision making, and then autonomous function protection. What is the level of rigor, uh, what sort of assurance does there need to be uh, as to its uh, failure rates, and then we get into system architecture where uh, maybe instead of doing 10 to the ninth ninth or even, even higher, that there's uh, something in place for which you can have, uh, this term has come up uh, several times, graceful degradation, where you have uh, your fully functioning system, everything's perfect, something goes wrong, you don't quite have the same capability that you did before, but you still have what it takes to get on the ground safely. I think when we talk about safety, that's what everybody's most interested in. There is a, a group that was established in ASTM, it's an administrative committee, to uh, develop a white paper that's just recently been published on autonomy, design, and operations in aviation. And uh, part of that uh, paper is to come up with some terms that uh, help potential standards development uh, in a number of different committees uh, to make sure that everybody's kind of on the same page when it comes to uh, the kind of terms that would be used when we talk about automation. So here are a few of them. I, I didn't put them all. It's a really long list. Uh, so automation is a holistic term used to refer in generalities to both automated and autonomous systems. Autonomous, an entity that can is, and has the authority to independently determine a new course of action in the absence of a predefined plan to accomplish goals based on its knowledge and understanding of its operational environment and situation. So how long did that take? to come up with that. That was probably a really long discussion. There's even more. Uh, having the ability and authority to make decisions independently and self-sufficiently. Autonomous flight, a flight that do does not require human decision making and instead relies on automation that can independently determine a new course of action in the absence of a predefined plan to execute management or operational control of a flight. A few more. Autonomous system. Hardware, software, or a combination of the two that enables a system to make decisions independently and self-sufficiently. Autonomous systems are self-directed toward a goal governed by rules and strategies that direct their behavior. Autonomy, the quality of being autonomous, i.e. without the need to be controlled by outside entities, self-determination. And then of course there's Autobot. Everybody. Uh, knows about Autobots. So you can, you can get in it as a passenger. Uh, it can transform into uh, something else, um, but it, it thinks for itself. So while this is science fiction, it's actually not too far off the mark if we think about where we're headed. There's a new task group that was just developed uh, under ASTM to look at regulatory barriers to autonomy in aviation. And this is just forming now, uh, and this will, uh, the purpose is to 
uh, focus in on uh, what kinds of things need to be considered uh, when dealing with autonomy and certification. So the objective is to improve safety in aviation through prudent introduction of automation and autonomy. The scope is to develop a process to move functions from human-centric to automation-centric with equivalent or better level of safety than intent in 14 CFR 91.3. So this is a huge paradigm shift um, from what we have today where the, the backstop is the human. So if you think of, of uh, an airline pilot, uh, well, these days, they don't necessarily have to do a lot in the cockpit. There's a lot of functions that are automated already. Um, but if something goes wrong, they're there to take action. Uh, and however wrong that is, and whether they're totally prepared for it or not, that's their job. And that's why they spend so much time training. So special considerations. Current technology implementation is largely reliant on the human taking over safety of flight responsibility if the automation function fails. The desire is to allow automation to be given the primary responsibility for safety without human backup. Regulatory gaps need to be identified and coordinated for a solution parallel between industry, ASTM, FAA, and other regulators and other standards groups. So to um, look at this in the, in the broadest scope, uh, Boeing put together uh, a list of kind of pieces to the, the puzzle here that should be considered when thinking about autonomous mobility. So the first was air routes. And so I'll just um, read what Boeing thinks is uh, what needs to be uh, touched on here. The design of performance-based rules for low-altitude trajectory-based operations and new operations in and around existing terminal areas. Air traffic management procedures, standard procedures for managing contingencies for new autonomous airspace users in existing controlled airspace. Digital information management, an autonomous cloud-based system for the rapid collection, processing, and real-time distribution of aeronautical data to large numbers of subscribing aircraft. Performance-based communication, navigation, and surveillance. A framework for, of performance-based CNS requirements and standards enabling new operations on established routes and the design and certification of new routes, separation standards, and infrastructure and equipment for high complexity operations in obstacle rich environments. Aircraft autonomy, a level of aircraft autonomy where systems exhibit operational behavior undistinguishable from that of a human pilot. Autonomous flight planning, onboard algorithms for rich time predictive flight planning and route generation in complex and dynamic airspace environments. Systems will make use of near real time updates to aeronautical data to plan safe and efficient routes consistent with dynamic changes to airspace, predicted weather, and other operational restrictions. Contingency management systems, robust autonomous systems that enable aircraft to safely and efficiently manage contingency situations, including situations requiring a precautionary or forced landing. <clears throat> Detect and avoid a suite of automated DA systems that are compatible with existing airborne collision avoidance systems, concurrently address the full scope of potential operator hazards like adverse weather, birds, obstacles, and terrain, dynamically adjust well clear and collision avoidance volumes to account for specific operating conditions and the quality of available surveillance information. Autonomous flight rules, a new set of flight rules tailored to account for the varying levels of autonomy in emerging aviation systems and certification network uh, framework. A framework for the comprehensive and efficient certification of complex autonomous aviation systems. The framework would supplement existing software and hardware assurance approaches with the aim of providing an acceptable level of assurance in the behavior of adaptive autonomous aviation systems for a wide range of operational conditions.
So these are all uh, great things to think about. Um, but then there's the doing part. Um, how do these get addressed? Uh, in one case, uh, there has been a review of the standards that were developed uh, for showing a means of compliance to the new Part 23 and CS 23, for which the initial um, application was to take what currently existed, don't, don't add anything to it, and just um, change the framework in which all that information was provided. So that happened, and then it was understood that we had a lot of new things coming for which the, even with the, uh, the effort on the standard side to, to have MISA compliance for what the rules said, the rules now were more performance-based, therefore more open to allow for whether it's new technology or new operational concepts uh, to come in, for which uh, on the standard side, that work wasn't done to cover those. And so just recently, there's been a, a, gap, analysis, a gap analysis performed and a list of where, what those gaps are covering. And what you see here is a little bit of an eye chart. Yeah, are the, those gaps that were found by uh, category? Some are very small um, and with very little extra language can, can cover uh, the space that we're talking about, EV toll and UAM. Uh, so we have, uh, I don't know, there's probably 20 different items there. Uh, we've established uh, task groups to, to work on these issues uh, with uh, people in a uh, role to, to lead that, and those are just being kicked off now. And the hope is that before too long, uh, there'll be more, uh, either more robust standards or new standards to cover these areas uh, specific to this area. So in the case of uh, EV toll, air taxi, uh, what are the, the unique features? Distributed electric propulsion, highly automated systems, might be piloted or remotely piloted or self-flying. And of course the benefits, surface transportation relief, more efficient routes, quiet and environmentally friendly. Those are all things that we want to see out of this. And that's uh, a view of, of some of the challenges we have in front of us, some of the ways that we're approaching them. And uh, I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much. <laughs>